The Harris Walls campaign is ramping up its efforts to expose Project 2025 ahead of next week's debate. This weekend of action aims to connect the extreme plan of Donald Trump's vow to reshape our government in his own image. And the campaign isn't doing this alone. It's relying on thousands of volunteers to pick up shifts as the campaign hosts 2,000 events in swing states. The goal? Warn more, more than a million battleground voters of what a possible second Trump term would look like. As Vice President Kamala Harris puts it, just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails. Joining us now, Maya Wiley, president of the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. She's also a former assistant U.S. attorney, and she brings the power every time she comes to the table. So nice to see you. It's wonderful to be at the power table. There we go. Oh, there we have, go. have you. I'm lucky. Look at all the ladies at the table. I'm so happy this morning. <laughs> what do you think about this? I mean, look, Michael talked about um, the, the guardrails that the vice president talked about. Uh, let's play what she had to say about how Donald Trump has openly vowed to be a dictator on day one. He has openly vowed to be a dictator on day one. He has said he would end the independence of the Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, so he could have the unchecked power to seek vengeance against people who disagree with him. He even called, for I'm going to quote now, the termination of the Constitution of the United States of America. Well, you know, you won't need to vote anymore mm. after Donald Trump mm. becomes president. Look, you know, I think what you're seeing and hearing is exactly part of what's happening in this race is helping to demonstrate what is at stake, but also how, and this is the next level down, I think, of conversation and communication that is, I think we're going to hear from the campaign, but certainly we should, is how it's going to impact everyday people's lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, for example, this point about the Department of Justice, it can seem high level and disconnected from ordinary people until that Department of Justice is criminalizing you for voting. Mm. Uh, one of the things in Project 2025, for example, is that not only can the president basically make the Department of Justice his own own personal prosecutorial tool. It shifts what we won in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which is the creation of the enforcement power of the Department of Justice over the shenanigans in states that are trying to control and discriminate against black or Latino or any voter. Uh, and that, they want to take that from the Civil Rights Division and make it a prosecutorial act to go after voters. And we've seen that with Crystal Mason, who went to vote being told mm -hmm. that she could lawfully vote. Black woman uh, told by the system that she could vote, shows up to vote, and then gets prosecuted for mm -hmm. voting. Now, imagine federalizing that. That is the kind of thing that is about real people, is about everyday lives. It's not remote. It's not distant. And so it's a clear and present danger, and this election will determine what happens. It's also new information. And one of the things we know is that voters who have not yet made up their mind are more open to new information, that it is not enough for Kamala Harris to get on that debate stage and talk about what Donald Trump did in his first term. She needs to talk about what he's proposing to do in mm -hmm. his second term. And a lot of that we know from the reporting. She's planning, this is from our friend Yamish Alcindor, planning to bring up Project 2025 on the debate stage as she makes the case because that is new information. It's, it's one thing to say he separated parents from their children at the U.S.-Mexico border. It's another thing to say his plan for a second term is to separate American families at the interior. It's one thing to say he, he led a violent mob to the Capitol on January 6th. It's another thing to say he plans to, you know, debunk the Department of Justice such that he can both leverage it to go after his enemies and make sure that protections are not in place for people who need them. That becomes new information. For voters. It's new information and there are the additional opportunities to really teach, once again, how it's going to impact ordinary people. So, for example, in Project, look, if you look at who's undecided in this race, right, the 18 percent or so who are undecided, who are centrist, lots of people of color and lots of people who are white, 
Uh, but the authoritarianism, authoritarianism isn't necessarily what's motivating them uh, to decide. What's motivating them to decide is, how's it going to impact my life, mm -hmm. my costs, the way I'm living, which is a struggle. And in Project 2025, you're going to lose overtime pay. Well, if you're a working person, many of the folks in this category do not have a college degree or do not have a four-year degree. They are wage earners, right? They are laborers. They are workers. L losing overtime pay is a major way people are just paying the rent. Those kinds of things, gutting the ability of the, the, uh, of, to attack uh, employers who are making your work life more dangerous and less safe. Talk to construction workers about how dangerous their jobs are and whether they need the kinds of occupational safety regulations and the enforcement of that at the federal level. These are things that are in Project 2025 because what it is seeking to do is dismantle the ability of our federal government to protect us. The, it's, it's not just the overtime pay, losing your overtime pay. You could lose your job. Correct. I mean, you know, we, we had the Heritage president at our table bragging that, oh, there are two million federal workers. At least a million of them should be fired. We'll start with 50,000, but at least a million should be fired. And I, and I think to your, your point, Maya, in terms of it's not just the, the, the piece over here that may deal with federal employees or the piece over here that may touch on abortion. The Harris campaign has an ad out where they try to frame that, uh, that narrative that you talked about. Let's take a quick listen to her Project 2025 ad. Trump's Project 2025 agenda will give him unchecked political power with no guardrails, and it would take black America backwards. Project 2025 would strip away our voting rights protections, and it eliminates the Department of Education. It would also require states to monitor women's pregnancies. It bans abortion and would rip away health coverage for millions. Kamala Harris will stand up to Trump and his MAGA loyalist dangerous plans to control our lives, because Trump is out for himself, while Kamala Harris is for the people. So for, to that point about, you know, people who are not being motivated around the, the authoritarian aspect of it, it is, who's in this for me? Who's out here fighting for me? And she's trying to let folks know it's not him. And there is a lot of contrast there that she can draw, both pulling out of Project 2025 and how that is really the plan right. and the platform. Right. And they can try no to how much they try to backstroke you can from it, right? All you want. <laughs> and that segment that you all did was so illuminating, right? And so important. But it's that that it's that last line. He's for himself. She's for the people. Right. That is the core of the message and all that they can elevate out mm -hmm. to draw that contrast in very plain terms. Child care. We just had child care, right, come up. I mean, the... the I mean, the, did we? Uh, okay. Yeah, we... <laughs> yes, we did. Well, we that, had a demonstration that, that was, of... The yeah. word was used. He was yeah. asked and, about and it. And yes. J.D. Vance, though, said, well, really, what people just need to do is get their grandparents involved. That's, well, that's going to fix our child care issue. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, my mother-in-law is very helpful, honey, love, but she was tired. Okay, not she only, not tired not only, to watch look, all the children. But we, but remind people, <laughs> remind people, they want to raise the retirement age before you can get Social Security benefits by years. But then tell you those same people who have to work longer, who are going to retire into poverty, should at the same time be taking care of their grandkids. How is that going to work? I'm not work and take care of my grandkids. It's just, it's, it's not adding up. Can we ask Let's do you a about? Little yes, can we? Because this is, I, I just drew a Venn diagram. Because I did not have on my bingo card Dick Cheney in 2024, endorsing the Democratic candidate for president. It's one thing to say, as we've talked about, that you're going to vote, that you're not going to vote for Donald Trump as a Republican. But Dick Cheney, a former vice president of the United States of America, to a Republican president, has said, I am voting for Kamala Harris. His daughter, Liz Cheney, congresswoman, former congresswoman, she's also voting for Kamala Harris. Ten's awful big. Ten is huge. From Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Dick Cheney. It's the Kamala Coalition. Yes. So any election turns on coalition building. 
the headline here is there's a very big tent coalition. Yeah. That is a very, very good sign mm -hmm. for the Harris campaign. It is a very bad sign for the Donald Trump campaign. But at the same time, we know it's still a toss-up election. It's going to be very close. And frankly, it's about turnout. You know, I think, you know, the polling and the kind of bad week for Harris, great week for Harris, bad week for Trump, not, well, actually, we're not hearing that enough, but uh, the actual comparison of what's happening in the campaign right. for each candidate. But this point is, it actually drives exactly to the point of that ad. And you can, I would expect to see that ad that you just showed updated to have Dick Cheney's picture in it, because the reason he's not agreeing on all it's of the policy a, positions policy. No. of Kamala Harris, he's agreeing that it's time that we actually have a true bipartisanship around whether or not we are going to have democracy. That's it. Dick Cheney, he's endorsed turning the page.